there's a variety of antidepressants around. They they all work by altering chemicals within the brain. And the um, the horror stories really relate to um, antidepressants that were used in years gone by. Most of the antidepressants that are used nowadays are relatively side effect free and non addictive. There are one or two exceptions to that, but most of the ones that your your average GP would use are very easy to get off of, and they have very few side effects. That's why we use them. And is it the case that you could your feeling depressed you get a diagnosis of depression and a course say for example of six weeks on medication could see you right and at the end of that with the help of counselling you could be fine um probably not six weeks the it's reckoned that um, the average antidepressant to have its best effect needs to be taken for between four and six months not six weeks a lot of people take antidepressants and after two or three weeks they start to feel better so they stop taking the antidepressants and then a month later they're back because they're depressed again. If you are put on antidepressants, it's important that you reattend for follow-up and that you don't just stop the drugs because you're feeling better. You talk to your doctor before you um, stop them. It's um, the way of the modern GP to try and work in partnership with the patient. So you shouldn't be put on anything that you don't agree to and uh, you shouldn't come off it without having uh, an agreement of your doctor. So it's a partnership between the patient and the doctor and hopefully that's the way most GPs work. And you say the drugs are... Is reacting the right word with chemicals in the brain or or producing more chemicals in the brain that are needed to keep you happy? And if you start taking your drugs after a few weeks, you can feel the effects of that. Obviously, the right chemicals are, are being produced and they're making you happy. How does the drug work in terms of, does it alter your brain so that it then continually makes those those happy chemicals once you stop taking the drugs? How, how does that work? Because if you need the drug to make the chemical... What it's a good happens question. when you stop taking the drug? <laughs> it's a good question and it's not easy to answer because um, uh, the drug will only increase the levels of chemical while you're taking it. It can't make your brain grow more chemicals. Um, some people probably suffer from depression because they um, chronically don't produce those uh, chemicals. Then, you know, if you like, that's where I, the, the person who maybe has depression all their life, where, where I said the, the way their brain's wired is such that they will get depression. But um, it seems to be the case that under certain life stimuli, you know, divorce, losing your job those kind of things um, people can develop a state where they appear to be depleted in the chemicals and for a short period of time boosting those chemicals enables their brain to recover to a stage where things then drop back to normal but what exactly is happening um, in terms of um, how much chemical is being produced and where it's being produced and for how long is a bit difficult to explain and I don't think we fully understand that. <laughs> um, are there other things that produce these happy chemicals i mean we're recording this interview on a day when it is fantastically glorious outside the sun is shining everybody's feeling happy we haven't seen the sun for so long you know coming to the end of winter isn't it great flowers are coming out are there things that actually promote the happy chemicals in your brain there are and as you rightly point out sunshine does and ultraviolet light on the um on the pineal gland at the base of the brain leads to the release of the chemical melatonin which is being used in itself as a treatment uh, for some uh, mental disorders and that certainly does um promote uh, good feelings and good moods and people who suffer in the winter who's the so the so-called seasonal affective disorder where they uh, they become depressed during the winter months appear to uh, suffer from depression caused by a lack of sunlight and some people's depression can be helped by exposure to um, artificial ultraviolet light you know sleeping with their heads in a light box or with an ultraviolet light on in the bedroom it actually does work do you get much sleep (laughs) <laughs> with the light on, I don't know. I don't know. I guess you'd learn to sleep with it. It's not something I've really, really explored. <laughs> um, I did know somebody actually in uh, um, who lived in Iceland who suffered terribly from seasonal affective disorder. And, of course, it's incredibly dark there for the majority of the year. And he realised, he was doing a biology degree, and he realised that when he was in the greenhouse and they had all the huge 700-watt mm. bulbs on, that he felt brilliant and so he got a couple and took them home and put them on in the kitchen and had his breakfast in front of them every morning and found that half an hour at seven o'clock in the morning with this light on and beaming across the apartment um and and his mum found that actually she felt a whole lot better too so it seemed to help them both by having their breakfast in front of this greenhouse light i think it's true that um uh, most people feel better when the sun's shining so even if you're not depressed i think you can boost your mood by by sunshine and maybe we should all have it <laughs> what it's, we really all need is a sun, 
is a sunny holiday in the middle of winter. But I think if we if we got holidays on prescription, the uh, the NHS would be in an even worse state than it currently is. <laughs> yeah, that might not be go, go down too well. Um, what about exercise? People often say, you know, you you feel better after you've you've had a bit of exercise. Does that help? Exercise is uh, very good. Exercise is a good way of dealing with anxiety. If you feel um, stressed and anxious, if you you know go for a walk, a run, a swim, a bike ride, um, it sort of burns off the adrenaline and you you feel better afterwards but it also does lift mood and an interesting um, way of um, considering exercise and mood is if you think about um, the um, athletes that you hear of um, with depression in the media very few of them are endurance athletes the people who do long distance running long distance cycling you very rarely hear of depression in those athletes now it may be that there are self-selected bunch who just don't get depressed or it may be that the amount of exercise they're doing on a long-term basis actually protects them 